Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play PlayStation 1 games on your Android device. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing we need to do for today's video is, of course, open up your Play Store. Once your Play Store is opened up, we're going to be downloading and installing two apps on our device. The first thing we're doing is coming to our search bar right here, and we're going to be searching for Duck Station. And this is going to be the emulator we're using in today's video. Thankfully, it is 100% free, and it's one of the best emulators you can use for PlayStation 1 on Android. So the first thing you want to do is get this installed. Once this is installed, we're going to be backing out of here. And again, we're going to be coming to our search bar here on the top. And the second app we're going to be searching for is Z Archiver. And this is going to be the second free application tool that we can use on our Android device. We're going to be using this a little bit later to extract and talk about games. And it's also just a good all around file manager that I recommend having on your Android device for further emulation kind of things. It's definitely something I'd recommend. So the second thing you want to do is get this installed. And once both of these are installed, the first thing I'm going to be doing is opening up DuckStation. If this is your first time opening the app, it will ask for access to your phone storage. We are going to have to allow it in this case. It may mention in the new update, depending on when you're downloading this, that this version also includes vibration and other key bindings. You may want to update your controller bindings now if you have been using any previous versions. For me, I'm going to be clicking no on this pop-up, but it's totally optional for you. So the first thing we're going to be doing is clicking the burger menu on the top left, and then we're going to be clicking the start BIOS button right here. And here you'll get this pop-up message, missing BIOS image, and you will actually have to supply and find your old BIOS for this. I will mention in today's video, I'm not going to be showing you or sharing any BIOS file links for you to find. I would recommend just dumping your own PlayStation 1 BIOS if you have one available to you. Otherwise, you can find them online and download them. Again, a quick Google search will help you out, but I will not be sharing any links to anything like this. From this point, we're going to be clicking yes on this missing BIOS pop-up, and then you need to locate to where your PlayStation 1 BIOS is. So for me, I currently have mine right here, and yours, if you download it, will most likely look the exact same like this. It'll be scph1001.bin, and this is exactly what we're looking for. We're simply going to be selecting this file. It should then import this BIOS file into our dock station. We can simply click OK, and now our BIOS file has been added. From this point, we can now talk about games and adding a game directory. So at the moment, it does mention a lot of this information on screen. So the current supported game formats are .q, .iso, .ecm, .mds, .chd, and .pbp. So most of your games will most likely come in a .iso or a .bin and a .q file, as mentioned as the top two here. But these other formats are also possible, and thankfully they are supported in this application. Now at the moment, I don't actually have any of the games in the supported format for this. Now depending on where you get your games, you can download them online. But as mentioned earlier with the BIOS file, I'll not be sharing any download links to anything like this. You will need to find and locate to your own games. Now, if you are like me and you have downloaded your games, they will most likely come in a .7-zip or a .rar format, in which case they are not on our supported list right here. And we will first need to extract these game files out. And that's where we're going to be using the application that we talked about a little bit earlier called Z Archiver. So what you need to do is open up Z Archiver and locate to any games that you have. So for me at the moment, I currently have Tekken 3 in a .7-zip file right here. We're simply going to be clicking it once with C Archiver. We're then going to be clicking either extract here or extract dot dot dot. Extract here will extract it in the current location and extract dot 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 will allow us to choose a location to extract it to. And then we're going to start extracting the game. Now this might take a couple seconds to a couple minutes depending on the game you're extracting and depending on the phone you're using. So these are a couple things to keep in mind. Now that my game is extracted, you can see it does come in a dot Q and a number of dot bin files. And thankfully, that's exactly what we're looking for. But as mentioned, you can use any of the other mentioned formats here as well. From this point, your games might not show up right away, in which case we simply need to add our game directory again. Again, I'm going to be using the same folder, clicking allow. It will then rescan this folder and then any games with the correct format will show up here. And you can see I currently have Tekken 3 showing up here at the moment. Now, from this point, whenever we tap on this game, it will load up. However, I do want to talk about a couple of other settings first, more specifically the controller settings. So thankfully, again, this application does support external controllers. So you can feel free to connect up any controllers you want if you want to use a wireless Xbox controller or a PS4 controller. These will work no problem here. Otherwise, you can use the on-screen digital touchpad, which is what I'm going to be using in today's video. But if you would like to set up any controllers, you can do it here. You can come here to your settings. You can select your controller view. So you can select digital touchpad, none, single, dual, or light gun. You have a lot of different options here. Or if you'd like to set up port one for an external controller, you can simply come in here to port one, select your controller type, and then go through and manually bind each of these buttons. Now, depending on the controller you're using, some of them might come up and work automatically. So for me, I haven't tested too many controllers, but for me, they do work perfectly well. They just take a little bit of setup in here to set up and start using your controller. From this point, we're simply going to be clicking on our Tekken 3 game right here. 
and it should load up just like that. Now from this point, as mentioned, I'm going to be using the on-screen controls, but you can feel free to use any controls that you would like. Now, depending on the size of your game and your phone, it might take a couple of seconds for your game to actually load up. But you can see just like that, it's going to load up just fine for me. And the overall performance for me has been really, really good. Now, I will mention I do have a Snapdragon 888 with 12 gigabytes of RAM. So really running PS1 games is no problem for my phone at all. But again, depending on the game you're trying to play and how old your hardware is, you might have different experiences. So that's something to keep in mind. But overall, I found my experience to be really, really good. From this point while your game is running, if you would ever like to open up the menu, we can simply click the pause button on the top right, and this should open up our over and this should open up our duck station on screen controls. Here we can load states, save states, toggle fast forward, exit our game, or change any of the other on screen settings here as well. We can even restart our console, everything from here. We also have access to our settings menu here on the top right, where we can get some information about our emulation, the speed, the the speed and a bunch of different settings here that we can feel free to customize as well you can also get some different information on the display audio enhancements and achievements now today's video is not really going to go into detail on all the different things duckstation can do it's really meant to be a high level overview guide but hopefully this helps you out and if you'd like to see more specific videos in the future be sure to let me know in the comments down below anyway guys i want to take this moment to give a huge shout out to the channel members sean daly devante hunt Liz Lingus and Q430L. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. If you'd like to have your name shout out in future videos or some other perks, be sure to click the join button or any video on the channel that would really help me out. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.